Hello, it's Jake here, and today we are finally finishing off the Titanic Wreck Diorama. Um, this has been a very popular one on the channel, and I know a lot of you have wanted to see it, uh, see the next episode, and I promised it, and then I didn't do it. I've had a lot going on. I will have a video explaining absolutely everything, and some of the new dioramas I'm planning. But yes, so today we are going to finish the wreck. Um, you you will notice this is a different colour to the last episode. That's because I was doing a video, I think I explained this a while back. I was doing a video on airbrushing it, getting it painted up and that. And I lost all my files and it was very annoying because I, it's not just these files I lost. Some, I lost some other files as well to for some other videos. And it was, very, it was a very annoying time. Um, so unfortunately we're going to have to miss that out in this video. Uh, this series, but we will get to that another day on a different wreck. Um, I'm planning some other wrecks, and I will be doing another Titanic wreck soon. So stay tuned for that. You'll see that in the channel update, hopefully uploaded today or tomorrow after this video. But yeah, so all we got to do on this, all I've done is I painted it in a brownie chocolate chocolate colour, um, and it looked like a giant chocolate bar. A lot of people were saying like a joint piece of chocolate and um, I've now weathered it in humble weathering powder rust weathering powder and it's it still needs touching up in a few areas especially down here under the bow there but nothing too serious um, and also in this video to finish it off we will be able to look at the boilers I do have them um, and just got to do some modifications to put them in there and everything I do need some PVA glue actually so I'll go and grab that in a second um, but yeah, let's get this diorama finished. I will be selling this one off. Um, so it will either be put on eBay or something like that. I'm not too sure. But I am selling it because I'm going to be building another. And this was a first time um, thing for me doing this Titanic wreck. And I did. there are problems with it. If you watch the series throughout, you will see that I've done some problems. And you probably notice some now. But... It's the first time doing it, and it, yeah, you learn as you go along. Uh, the Britannic wreck, of course, I have, and a few other ones I'm planning. Um, I do have two I will be uploading on the channel soon. One of them has been finished. Um, I'm just finishing off the uh, diorama now. Um, but anyway, let's get back to this wreck. So I'm going to set the camera up, and we will fit the boilers. Hopefully they're dry, and I'll go and get some PVA glue. Okay, so we are looking at the break of the wreck. Um, this is obviously where the ship snapped in half. Um, I just noticed as well the screw's quite quite um, noticeable there, so I might try and do something with that at the end of this video. Also, uh, this will be filmed over two days because PVA glue that's going to hold the boilers in will not set straight away. And I want to get it right and then finish this series off, so I will film one part today and one part tomorrow. Mind my hand. Um, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera. Here's the boilers. Now, yes, they're miles too long, but it's only the fronts that we're interested in. Um, these are just made out of some wood I had lying about from other projects over the years. And one, two, three, four on display. So I've got four of them cut up. And all we're going to do is just put some details in these um, using a battery driver and one of these little and drills these are ideal for model railways um, all the years I've been wanting to get one I've never got actually around to buying one and I bought one a couple of weeks ago and I haven't put it down since it's, it's helped me with so many different jobs especially with one of the wrecks I'm working on doing all the portals on it and um, so that's been quite nice so yeah we're working on this area the break uh, no other details really I would have liked to maybe cut this up a little bit make it look a bit more broke but Never mind, I'm happy with it now. Um, and we'll put the boilers in there. So, I need to... They're a little bit wet still, the um, oh, wrong way. The boilers. I've just literally sprayed them about 10 minutes ago. Um, and then just gave them a coat of matte lacquer. Um, but I'm not too worried about fingerprints or anything because this is going to be inside the ship. They are too long, but what I was, I, I cut them up on a chop saw. Um, don't use a chop saw if you don't know how to use one and yeah 
the chop saw does one certain size. So that's that. Um, I, I will keep some of this rust down here because I want to pick out some of the details in the seabed. I noticed there's one or two bits I haven't picked out yet. So I might have to get a fine brush and just paint them a little bit. Um, what I'm probably well, what I've done with some of the details, and I still got to add a little bit more paint to them. Just painted them a brown colour, and then add the rust to it, and it really brings out a rust effect because of the brown behind it, and rust can be orange, brown, you know, pretty much. So I can get away with that. So let's do one of these boilers. Now I got a proper drill just to drill one or I am gonna do it off camera just so. Okay, so I've done the boilers. Um, let me just grab, they are not 100% brilliant. Um, but you ain't got to see them too much because of all the, I still got to add some rust core effects to them and everything. But here they are. I don't know how I see that. Like, again, the size is miles too long, but you ain't got to see the rest of it. Um, so I've done four of them. So let's zoom in. Let me get a better shot of the rack. There we go. And what I'm going to do... I'm going to tilt the rack up a second just to let the PVA run in. There we go. So quite a bit of PVA there, but what we'll do as we slide these boilers in, um, it will push the PVA back and help with the final uh, glue in. There we go, see? That's one. And again, we remember we've got to detail these up a bit. Um, oh, don't tell me that's not got get stuck. All it is, there's a screw and what was the deck stone, and we might have to trim. So let me put the one in beside. And what I'm gonna do is just trim. Let's just have a right. So I trimmed them down. Here they are. Cut them up. Um, it's not harder because my voice is currently out of action because we're redoing the shed um, so yeah but never mind we've got cut down anyway let me get them all in there and then we'll maneuver them about a bit but they should fit oh, I don't want to slide them back where's me uh, tweezers it's the last thing I want to do is get them stuck right at the back there okay that was fiddly um, the first one moved right back and I had to try and just pull them up a little bit. But we got them in there. That's the main thing. Um, so we got all four in. This one seems to be caught on some so I have tried to manoeuvre them just a little bit. But it's okay. There we go. So, yeah. That's the boilers in. So what I've got to do now is leave this overnight. Let the PVA fully dry. Um, before we even consider messing with it anymore, because I don't want them to move. Um, and I'll finish f uh, doing the ship tomorrow now. Um, and yeah. Right, here we are next day, and it looks like the PVA glue's dried quite nicely. Um, it does look like the one boiler has shifted just a bit, this one here. Um, but never mind. You know, it's not a big deal. We're now all weathered up. Um, whilst, you know, I was waiting for this dryer, I went up in the house and I had done some research. And I really didn't get a straight answer. And I, I've left a message with a couple of uh, friends on Facebook who are massive, massive Titanic fans. And they know every part of the ship. Um, and they also helped me out when I done some... Um, well, they spotted some problems with this one and they said that needs to be done for the next model on that. And I took it all in because the next model I want to get perfect, uh, perfectly accurate to the real thing. Um, but yeah, five or four boilers, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, because I see pictures of the wreck and it looks like there's four boilers. And then you see some other pictures now, and it looks like five, without really going through all the uh, right up of the ship and that in the manuals. I'm not gonna know. Um, but anyway, I want to get these weathered up today. Um, that's the first part of this video. So we will be using my Humbro uh, weathering powder to start off with, and literally just give it a nice little dusting, nice little coat. Um, I really do recommend these uh, weathering powders. 
I use them quite a bit, especially for model railways and when weathering up certain areas. Um, for instance, I got a, on my new model railway I'm doing, I got a older farmhouse and that, and I've been weathering up a caravan that's gonna go in the garden and just using black and rust weathering powder. That's all I've used, and it looks really nice. And then once this is, I've got this to the right look, I will spray it with matte varnish, which I have here. Um, I thought it was up in the house, but no, it's in here. Um, I was looking for it to, this morning, actually. Just get a couple of coats. And that's why I painted these uh, boilers brown, because the rust effect really comes out nice on them. Also, if you don't know, PV glue dries clear. So we haven't got any, um, you know, arbor looking glue on the bottom of the wreck here neither. There's a bit of debris that I'm just... I am going to highlight some of the debris in this video. Um, but I'm probably going to need my tripod for that. Which is still in the car from yesterday. I've got to put a bit more rust on back here. And all I'm using is an old paintbrush. I you know, look at the state of it, it's nothing special, but it's ideal for bits like this because you can, you know, get in there and, and that, so that's good. Um, you may notice in the background as well, just over here, a new Titanic kit. More on that in the channel update, which should be uploaded after this video. Um, but no, so there we go. The boilers actually look pretty good um, I, I've got to do this and see what happens um, and then if they needed a coat of you know paint I would have done that just try and get some rust on the edge there the edge of the uh, bottom of the ship there we go so yeah I'm pretty pleased with that it's come up very nice what I'm going to do is just um, I'll move the camera and I'm going to give it a very very light coat of matte varnish Right, so the boilers are more or less done. I might give them another coat in a bit. But there you go, they look like it's a bit on a twist. Um, but it's actually the wreck, and the wreck's all twisted. Um, I think, yeah. So what it is, the decks where I made them collapse, they've collapsed on the angle. Um, but, you know, that's nothing to worry about. So... Down here, at the break, there's one or two pieces that need um, highlighting, bring them out. And also, I will just give, I'm interested to see what that looks like when that's sprayed. There's then. So see that, it's like a owl shape. Um, that's a bit of debris I put down. And I completely missed it when I was, you know, spraying the ship up. And there's also a piece right here. So I'm using one of these again. You would have seen these in a previous video. Um, these are tester paints, you know, for when you paint your house. And this is a mocker. These are usually about three pound, but I was very fortunate to buy a load of them for ten p from B and Q, um, from like a bargain bin they had in that. And they use 10p and I picked up loads and they are ideal for model railway stuff and dioramas and everything. Um, oh, that smells a bit. Uh, right, let's have a look. So this is the Tamiya paint I've just used. It is red, brown, XF64. There you go, XF64. Um, I actually, every time I go to a model shop, I make sure I always try and buy at least one, you know, one little tub of paint in pretty much any colour. Um, I do tend to go for the darker colours. 
and because all of my dioramas are not colourful. One thing you will get, um, I found quite a lot actually with doing this. Not with this wreck probably, I've noticed it with others. Um, so this Humbro Rust Weathering Powder, when you varnish it with Humbro Acrylic Varnish, matte varnish, um, you get white patches. Now that's to do with oils in your skin when you apply it, I'm told. Um, it's not too bad on this one, but some of my other dioramas has come up quite a lot. Um, and it's quite annoying because you get white patches on the ship. Um, and yeah, of course, that's no good. In some cases, it might work, but in some it might not. Right, so we've got to let that dry, but that is finished, I believe. I'm just going to add a bit more. I might give it a light coat of varnish again. Um, and this one will be sold. I do plan to sell this one. Um, it will be going on eBay at some point. Not yet, um, because I've got a lot of things to do. So here it is, here is my Titanic 1400th wreck diorama. Now, I've said all along right, from when we cut the ship up that it's, it's not right, I, I should have done it more better, but you learn as you go along, and I've, I've said this all along. So I'm happy how ours turned out. I will be, as soon as I finish this one, there's one or two other dioramas I want to get finished, and I will be starting a new Titanic wreck. Now, I will be doing videos on that, but not not a complete... Um, you'll see. You'll see. It's going to be an interesting one, because I have a very, very good idea for how I want to do the next wreck. Um, and I will be doing both sections. I will be doing the bow and stern. Um, but it's going to be a twist, and I can't wait to share that with you. It's something I've not seen before done in this model. In this scale, anyway. Um, but anyway, go back to this wreck. It is looking fantastic. Also, um, I was really, I really wanted to get the ship on a tilt because a lot of um, pictures that I saw, or dioramas people have done, the ship is stood up right, like flat on the seabed. And then I watched something about where the uh, you know to drain the oceans and have a look at the wreck and it really did show the ship on an angle um, and I, I wanted to capture that so as you can see the ship that's the canvas straight now and the ship is on an angle one of the other things I really enjoyed doing was destroying the bridge on the wreck um, that's really nice how that's worked it really changed the look of the ship as well um, and that's one thing I didn't do on the Britannic wreck because the Britannic bridge was also destroyed in the uh, sinking of it so yeah that was really nice to get that and I, I've done a really good job that is my favorite part of building this wreck um, the favorite part of the diorama is the the destroyed bridge um, and I'm really pleased how that turned out I probably should have got rid of these hatches down here um, I did get rid of this hatch afterwards and it, in real life the hatch is somewhere down here but farther away than this so I didn't want to put it in. Um, if we go back to the rust decor effect, try and get the rust on the ship, that was just used in normal war filler, nail filler. You know always in your war you fill it up and scrape it off it goes hard. That's what I've done with this, go back through the episodes. It would be episode 3 I think um, and that come up nice and then obviously we got the brake section down here the chimneys of course gone um, let me just zoom out so there's a staircase and you can't really see in that but there's two decks um, that I also drilled through so they are present um, if we move around we got the boilers down here which is obviously the last part of the wreck. Last part I've done. That screw is still a bit uh, prominent. I might have a look at that at a later date. 
before selling this on. But if we, there we go. So you can really see how it tilts down. And it's really hard to get that right, uh, especially when I do this next wreck. Um, yeah, it's got to be interesting. I want to get that right. And we got the ore here. There's damage to the other side that I didn't really do. Um, well, I did do the damage, but it, it turned out to be too far down. And it was hit with the uh, seabed. And then, of course, we got a debris field. You can see bits highlighted. Uh, there's not too many bits on this side. The largest bit is this piece here, which is obviously off the hull. And we got some bits around the back of the wreck as well. And some of these are still drying, so yeah. Especially this bit down here with the boilers. But yeah, I'm really pleased. Um, that I've, I've finished this diorama now because this has been a long, long process to get this one done and I'll have news of what's been going on soon um, but there we go, let me just take a picture of that so what I've got to do is take a look outside, get some pictures done of it and post them up on the Facebook page too and we'll go from there, but I want to thank everyone who's been watching this series um, thank you for all the new subscribers as well who subscribe to watch these videos. Um, like I said, I do have something planned with a new Titanic rack, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you watch the next channel update because there's a lot in there I've got to get fitted in for the plans in the future of this channel. And we'll go from there. So thank you for watching this video. 